Hello, everyone. This is Ms. Thompson again. Happy Tuesday. Um, just as a reminder, my name is Wenda Thompson from John Marshall High School. I am the English instructional coach there, and I am excited to be here with you on this Tuesday. Today, we are going to continue reviewing our organizational patterns and applying some of that knowledge that we've been gaining and working on. And I hope you guys brought your organizational pattern booklets. Mine still looks a little crazy, but you know, that's okay. I can always make another one. And so can you. That's gonna help you refresh your information and review the words and the material that we went over yesterday and help you with today and the rest of the week, okay? So just as a review of our objectives for the week, we have 8.6a, identify an author's organizational pattern using textual clues such as transitional words and phrases. 8.6b, apply knowledge of text features and organizational patterns to analyze selections. 8.6j, identify cause and effect relationships, okay? Just as a reminder, the verbs are shaded in yellow, and that's going to tell you the skill we're working on, and the underlined are the nouns that are gonna, that's what we're gonna use the skill to do, okay? Now, learning target for today is going to be, today I will identify an author's organizational pattern, including cause and effect relationships, using textual clues such as transitional words and phrases. So from yesterday, we're going to work on some of that review. This should be the same activity that you were working on yesterday. We're just going to review those answers, okay? The first one we had is sequential order. Now, you'll often see sequential order in directions. This is primarily in sequence, one, two, and three. Again, sequential order, sequence. So here's our example. Have you ever made macaroni and cheese? It's simple. First, boil some water and make some macaroni. Then, make your cheese sauce. After the cheese sauce is ready, mix it with the macaroni. Bake the, enti bake the entire thing in the oven. Finally, it's time to eat. And your job yesterday was to find those signal words, okay? <clears throat> I hope that you chose these ones. First, then, after, and finally, were the, sequ were the sequential transitional words from yesterday okay the next one you first had to figure out which of these two paragraphs was in chronological order okay i hope you chose this one this one has some chronological order um words and terms to help us figure that out and we have our clue words our transitional words to help us figure that out I hope you chose these. So we have through the ages that has something to do with time. 1681 is a date. Later, after that, and today are all clues to tell us why this is chronological order. Then we had compare and contrast. We're gonna compare and contrast these two birds. The cardinal and the cedar waxwing are two common birds. Both have crests in their heads. Both are common bird feeders, but the birds have some differences. The male cardinal is a bright red while the waxwing is brown. The cedar waxwing often migrates from place to place. On the other hand, the cardinal stays in one place year after year. And again, your task was to find those transitional words. So we've got both, but, differences while as well as on the other hand for our transitional words. I hope you got them all. If you missed one or two, that's okay. But the goal is that we can find all of those transitional words in our passages. Next, we have a cause and effect. Baby painted turtles spend all winter in their nests. They have special chemicals in their blood that can keep their blood from freezing. As a result, baby painted turtles can survive freezing temperatures. Now we're gonna be finding the cause and effect here. So the cause, they have special chemicals in their blood that can keep their blood from freezing, has the effect that they can survive in the, in the winter time, okay? They can survive those freezing temperatures. So we've got our cause and we've got our effect. Now this next one, was to find a problem and solution. I'm sorry, my slides look a little crazy here, but I hope that you guys highlighted the problem, 
is what I have in pink. The Chesapeake Bay faces an uncertain um, future. Issues such as pesticides, too many nutrients, and habitat loss all threaten the bay's water quality and animal life. And if you see, that problem has three parts. Pesticides, too many nutrients, and habitat loss. They all threaten the bay's water quality and animal life. And our solution was, is if everyone in the Chesapeake Bay watershed works together, solutions may be found. They want people to work together. Scientists are hopeful that the future might be brighter, okay? Now the concept and definition one. If you figured this one out, three stars for you. Maybe ask your mom for a cookie. The pond was a beautiful place to visit. The falling leaves, all different colors, decorated the surface of the water. At the edges of the pond, small wildflowers grew. The golden forest glowed faintly in the distance. The concept was that the pond was a beautiful place to visit and all of the other sentences provide details for why that concept is true. So the concept at the top would be the pond was a beautiful place to visit and the, all of these different details would be what the concept sits on top of. So the falling leaves, all different colors, how they decorated the surface of the water would be one detail. At the edges of the pond, small wildflowers grew. That's another detail. And then we have another one here. The golden forest glows faintly in the distance. Look at that glow, it's beautiful. <laughs> so now, today, our task is to practice with graphic organizers. And as we do that, you're gonna need your organizational pattern booklet, and you're also going to need a sheet of paper or something to write with, okay? We're gonna go in ahead and we're gonna kick it off. Don't forget, you can pause your video if you need any additional time. So now we're gonna apply that knowledge. On the next few slides, you will read some paragraphs all about the Great Chicago Fire. So this was one long passage that was broken up into different paragraphs to show you how to apply the knowledge of the different organizational patterns, okay? Your task is to decide on the text structure for each one. So you got to figure out the text structure and then we're going to move a step further to have you apply that knowledge and insert it into a graphic organizer, okay? Understanding the text structure will help you understand each paragraph. So what's the organizational pattern for the first one? I would like for you guys to read the first one as uh, silently as I read it aloud. Daniel Sullivan was the first to notice the flames coming from the O'Leary barn at around 8.30 p.m. on October 8th. A problem with the alarm box made it impossible for the people in the Bay Area to call for the fire department. By 9.30 p.m., the entire block was blazing. In another three hours, there were fires all over Chicago. The heavy wind coming from the lake only made the fire bigger. It would be another day before the fire would be completely out. By that time, 17,500 buildings had been burned, okay? I want you guys to go on ahead and try to figure out what the organizational pattern is. Try to find those clues. I've got some Jeopardy music to keep us company so we can figure out um, what's going on. You guys have 30 seconds. that you guys have figured out that this was chronological order, okay? Now we have some clue words like first, 8.30 p.m., October 8th, these are all dates, these are all times, okay? And we've got some of those clue words that we wrote down in our notes, okay? By 9.30 p.m. in another three hours, another day before, all of these things are clues. So now we're going to get some graphic organizer practice. As you guys see, we have our flow chart on the left and we have our um, passage on the right. 
And so now it's your job to draw out your graphic organizer and place the events into the graphic organizer. I'm not gonna do this one with you, but I am gonna give you guys 30 seconds before I move on to the next passage. Don't forget, you can pause. you guys just to go on ahead we've already chosen all of the actual events to go into our flow chart now it's just your turn to put it in if you need more boxes please feel free to add them in so now we've got to figure out what's the next one okay i'm going to go on ahead and read the passage and go on and fight um excuse me <laughs> i'm going to read the passage and um i want you guys to read along with me as i read aloud why was the Great Chicago Fire so disastrous? After all, Chicago had fire departments and fire alarms. One reason for the terrible fire is that the alarm malfunctioned. Now here's another opportunity to use some of your English skills. If you remember the um, root word mal, M-A-L, it means bad, something that should not have happened did. Malfunction, it means it did not function the way it was supposed to. The local fire company noticed the fire by accident as it was returning from another fire. As a, another problem, a watchman saw the flames directed other um, fire companies to a location that was nearly a mile away from the fire. Because of these two problems, a fire that could, that could have been controlled rapidly spread across the city, okay? Now let's take our 30 seconds with Jeopardy to figure out which one it is. you guys have taken it down to a few and figured out that this one was cause and effect. Now this one was a little tricky because you had some problem and solution words in there. But if you notice, there are no solutions in sight. So it could not be problem and solution. It has to be cause and effect. Now if you notice, this is highlighted in different colors. Yellow is going to be for the cause and pink is going to be for the effect. And we're gonna use that when we get to our graphic organizer. So this is one with a few different causes, okay? So one was that the terrible, um, that the alarm malfunctioned. Another one is that the watchman sent them to the wrong place. And because of these two problems, the fire that could have been controlled spread across the entire city, okay? Now, I think you know what's next, graphic organizer practice. Now, as you see, there are three boxes here. If you know, if you know that you don't need three boxes, don't use three boxes. So you might just need two on that cause side and one for the effect. That cause and effect um, graphic organizer is very flexible depending on the information that you have. So now we have our um, timer here. Um, and let's go on ahead and give you 30 seconds. Now 
you guys have been doing a fantastic job today. Thank you for all of your hard work. Now we're gonna go on ahead and I think we've got another one to figure out next. What's the organizational pattern? After the fire, thousands of people were left homeless. Many escaped on the fire, escaped the fire with nothing except the clothes on their backs. Providing all of these people with food, clean water, and shelter was a huge task. Luckily, the, quickly, the city quickly formed a relief and aid society. This group started giving out the food donations that were pouring in from other cities. The society built places for people to live, gathered the tools that people needed to rebuild their houses, and even vaccinated 64,000 people against smallpox. So now it's your turn to go in ahead and figure out what's the organizational pattern and what are those signal words. <laughs> you guys to get caught up when you see things like other signal words, other transitional words for different um, organizational patterns, you're looking for the main organizational pattern. Yes, we have one here for chronological after the fire, but this one isn't really told in chronological order. This one is problem and solution. And if you notice, we've got one big problem, but we've got a lot of solutions, okay? So the overarching solution is that the city made a, um, a relief and aid society, but then the rest of this paragraph talks about all the different things that the relief and aid society did, okay? So for this one, we're gonna go on ahead to the next slide where we work on our graphic organizer. You can do one problem, one solution, or if you wanna get fancy with it, you can do your one problem and multiple solutions because of all of the things that are provided right here. Okay, gonna give you guys another 30 seconds. Awesome job. And don't forget with these graphic organizers as well to label them. So you might want to put problem above the box and solution above that box, okay? I think there are more. I don't think we're done today, okay? And this is our independent practice. I'm walking you guys through how to do this. This is your guided practice where I'm reading the stories with you. I'm showing you what those transitional words are. I'm showing you the problems and solutions and all you're working on is placing them into that graphic organizer format. I can't do that for you. You've got to learn how to do that yourself, okay? So what's the next organizational pattern? Chicago changed in many ways after the fire. Before the fire, most of the buildings were less than five stories high. The buildings that were constructed after the fire, however, were some of the first skyscrapers in the country. Before the fire, most of the houses were made of wood. After the fire, people chose to build their houses out of stone and brick, stone or brick. There were changes in where people lived as well. The poor people in the city lived close to the center of the city before the fire. After the fire, they moved into neighborhoods that were farther away from the downtown area. Now you guys know the drill by now. We have our 30, 30 seconds to figure out which one it is with our signal words. All right, guys.
guys, I hope that you figured that this one was a compare and contrast. Notice how we're talking about Chicago. Chicago's our topic, but we're looking at how they, things were before the fire as well as after the fire. So we have before the fire in yellow and we have after the fire in pink. So when you're doing your graphic organizer, Chicago would go up here. We didn't really talk about a lot of similarities, but we do have our differences going on. We are comparing and contrasting Chicago, if you want to put that in the middle, and we're talking about them before the fire and after the fire, okay? Here are your 30 seconds. Draw it out. Don't write before the fire in the box. Put what happened before the fire. too much about the Chicago fire but this is such a tale of resiliency and how through devastation guys having so many 17 5 17,500 buildings being burnt down brought so many good things for Chicago after that okay so now we ha still have another one we're not quite done but I think we're close all right by Monday night the town of Chicago was burning People described it as terrible, but amazing. The flames were brighter than anything people had ever seen. The harsh winds swept the fire across the city with terrible speed. For many who watched it, it was a sight to remember for the rest of their lives. And it's your turn again. you guys are ready to check your answer for this one and I think you probably figured out by now that that is a concept and definition okay people describing the town of Chicago as terrible but amazing was our major concept and everything under it support that main concept okay so the flames were brighter the harsh winds came with a terrible speed so that might so this might show how it's terrible but um they're gonna remember it for the rest of their lives it's amazing they've never seen anything like this okay so now ladies and gentlemen y'all know what's left our graphic organizer practice and if you guys would forgive me i forgot the timer here so i'm going to go back to use the timer from the passage and i'm going to just show you guys that we're going to write our concept in the middle bubble and we're going to put some details that support that Okay, I'm gonna go back and then I'm going to use the timer here. And just as a reminder, we're doing the graphic organizer at this point. gents i believe that was the last one for today just as a review for what we talked about today we went forward and we reviewed our work from last class and then we got to put some application to the work that we've been doing with our organizational patterns we used our little booklets to figure out the signal words in each of the organizational um pattern paragraphs about the Chicago fire. Tomorrow, we're going to be doing some reading, but I'm going to be doing it with you. So I hope you are ready. 
we've got this guys have a good rest of your day